up? You're looking at CBmania.com. I'm your host, Militia. I'm here at the New York Anime Festival. Today, I'm going to bring you the hottest in anime. I'm going to introduce you to the voiceover actors of some of your favorite characters that's in anime today. And we're going to get inside scoop and all the latest and greatest stuff that's coming out in the anime world. So stay tuned. OK, hey, what's up? It's Militia, and I'm here with Ajawa. Hello, look at this guy. What's your name, man? Just Jawa, that's it. Just Jawa, that's it. Yeah, that keeps it, it simple. Um, can you do a turnaround so everyone can uh, get the full effect of your costume? Looks good. Now, did you put this together yourself? Yeah, a lot of time. How long did it take you? Probably a good six months to a year. All right, now, see, my question, since my name is Militia, I'm automatically fascinated by this weapon you got in your hand right there. What is that? This is a British infield rifle from World War II. Okay, where did you get that, eBay? eBay. <laughs> did you see how I nailed that? Yeah, that wow, how many bidders on that one? Mm, I just won 250 bucks. 250? 250. And worth every penny, I think. Penny. Absolutely, so what is it about Jawa that uh, you're attracted to or that you find fascinating? Oh, that's easy. It was my first Halloween costume as a kid. I was five years old, so here I am, 34, and I'm King Jawa. Wow. From five to 34, and he still loves it. That's devotion. So um, how about Halloween? What are you going to do for Halloween? Are you going to do this, or you have another character that you like from Star Wars? Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So for Halloween, probably Sand Trooper. A Sand Trooper? Sand Trooper, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's another, like, four months of work, costume-wise. Yeah, that, that one wasn't so bad. But it doesn't really bother you because you love it so much. Oh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So here you are. Jawa, Jawa, Jawa. Hey, what's up? This is Militia coming to you from the New York Anime Festival. I'm here with Adam from Funimation Entertainment. Uh, give our, our uh, CB Mania viewers a little backstory on Funimation. Oh, we're the uh, leading Japanese animation company in uh, North America. Very proud to be that. We have about a third of the marketplace. and been bringing out some of the big hits, including Claymore, Darker Than Black, Oran High School Host Club, and the ever-loved Dragon Ball Z. Never get enough of that. Very cool. Very cool. So um, what's new from Funimation that you can tell our viewers about? Well, right now we're here this weekend promoting uh, Claymore. As we see behind us, we actually have some of the directors and voice actors from the show actually signing autographs. We actually showed a little bit this weekend, as well as uh, Dark Riven Black. We're actually screening right now in our panel room to a full house of people actually checking it out for the first time ever, including having the director and some people from Japan even uh, actually checking out the show itself. Between that and our really um, fangirl favorite, Oran High School Host Club, which we screened, showed earlier this week, or earlier um, today, excuse me, and it was just nonstop. I mean, I was deafened by the fans yelling and screaming and happy and clappy. So, oh, that's so cool. It's been great. That's amazing. Well, um, tell me a little bit about um, uh, Dragon Ball Z and like its influence in anime culture and uh, how the fans like embrace it. Well, Dragon Ball Z is, is, is our bread and butter. It's what started the company. It's what keeps us going. We love it. We love all the fans out there of Dragon Ball Z. Thank you again for purchasing everything and enjoying the show. I mean, really, you know, the Dragon Ball Z is it's legend. It's it's classic. It's it's a starter kit for a lot of people in the anime. As it, we always joke around in the offices, um, Dragon Ball Z. The audience is there's a new nine year old born every day. <laughs> So between that, getting them in um, young when they love that kind of show, it kind of leads them into all the other shows we have eventually. So like, oh, that Dragon Ball Z is really nice. Let me see what else is out there. So it's, it's kind of a gateway to, um, to bringing new anime fans to the market. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Um, are you into anime yourself? Like, are you a fan and then you got involved with uh, Funimation? Or is it that you started working with the company and then it's kind of like embraced you and come part of your world? Oh, I've been a fan since I was three years old. I was uh, watching Astro Boy on BBC Two when I was a little, little kid and figured out in my teenage years that, oh, this is actually a culture. I mean, kind of got in through all that and got a business degree, ran an anime club, did a marketing firm, kind of all this kind of stuff like that. And one day, just talked to the right people, got to actually work on anime, got my dream job. Can't talk too bad about that. Wow, that's amazing. There's actually a lot of people that we've spoken to today that said similar things, that they were involved in anime and now that they're working in it. So it's like a dream come true for them. So that's very cool. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, Funimation's role in um, video games. Oh, we work closely with uh, a lot of different um, licensors out there for like the Dragon Ball video games. We had some Yu Yu Hakusho video games. We're really excited now. Um, we have um, 
a new Afro Samurai show coming out, Afro uh, Samurai Resurrection, which is starting on Spike TV. And at the same time that's releasing on TV, um, Namco Bandai is bringing out the Afro Samurai video game which is going to be out for, I believe, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And it's got a new mechanic on it that we're really super excited about. Because if you've played a lot of uh, games, or this one's actually you play as Afro Samurai and you're running through the villages. Um, That's super cool. It's amazing. And like you play a game like that, when you're trying to you cut someone in, like apart, they always fall apart in the same way. They have a new splashing mechanic. Like if someone like you know covers their face and you slash them across, those exact parts you cut off will actually fall off the bodies. So, I mean, if you want to be so creative that you're like, I'm going to cut their left hands this time. I'm going to put them in a circle. I'm going to write my name on their chest in, in, you know, in blood. You can do that in this game. It's amazing. Wow. That, uh, that appeals to the evil in me. And as I'm sure it appeals to the evil in a lot of you. Oh, the first time I played the demo, I'm like, I could play, sit here and play the same level like five times, let alone the game. Wow. That's awesome. So, um, what else that's fun and exciting like that that you can tell me? Like, any other... Uh, Sneak peeks you can give our viewers, uh, things to expect from Funimation. Sure. Uh, well, actually, with this, at this weekend, we announced uh, two things. We announced that we picked up the Mushishi live action, since we had the anime series for Mushishi. And we went ahead and picked up the live action from Japan as well, because it just made sense. It's just a great, great brand. As well as we announced for the Funimation channel, which is available in New York and anyone has Verizon Fios around the nation, that we have Oran High School Host Club and some other fun shows coming soon to it. Oh, very cool. So you're going to be able to get it on your TV, New Yorkers. So it's going to be right in your home. Yep, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, that's awesome. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for so much filling us in on Funimation. And thank you for watching. This is CBmania.com. Hey, what's up, CB Maniacs? This is Militia, and you are looking at Steve Bloom, who is the voice of so many characters in the Japan anime world. Uh, you want to give us a little backstory? Let people know uh, where they've heard you before. Yeah, I played uh, Spike from Cowboy Bebop. He called you a cowboy. What did he mean? What are you? Just a humble bounty hunter, man. And um, Vincent from Final Fantasy. And uh, lately, Liron from Gurren Lagann. And then uh, lots of Digimon. Um, Yaki Doodle from Harvey Birdman. Um, Heat Blast from Ben 10, now Wolverine from Wolverine and the X-Men, Green Goblin. Done a lot of stuff, about 17 years in the business so far. Wow, that's quite the career. Um, so in your opinion, uh, I noticed that you probably play like a lot of villainous kind of <laughs> character, as he gives me like the most evil laugh. Did you just hear that? <laughs> right? Okay, so please tell me, um, like, where do you find your inspiration for these villainous characters? Uh, I think we've all got a dark side, so... Um, I just, I'm fortunate enough to be able to express it in a healthy way, you know. So uh, it's, you know, it, it just, I take all the rage that I get driving in traffic. I come from L.A. So I take all that rage and everything else that's bothering me from the day, and I just kind of channel it all into that character, and it's a great release. I don't need therapy. Understandably so. Yeah. So um, can you give us any, like, previews as to what you're doing now, like something new and exciting that's coming up? or? Uh... Uh, well, in, in anime, we just finished recording Gurren Lagann. And uh, it's on uh, Anim. It's a lot of you guys here today. Yeah, there's a lot of Gurren Lagann crew going on right now. And that's on Sci-Fi Channel Anim Mondays. And uh, very funny show and very uh, uh, complicated show. There's a lot of stuff going on. Very cool. Um, also on uh, Ghost Slayer's Ayashi and uh, Code Geass in the anime world. And then we're um, going into another season of Wolverine and the X-Men, which will start airing in the States in January. That's exciting. Really cool. And Spectacular Spider-Man is airing now. And uh, just lots of stuff. A lot of games, too. I'm doing three or four games a week. So. Tell us about the games that you're up to. Uh, most of them I can't talk about. But Ooh, secret, <laughs> secret games. But yeah, they're, they're all, I mean, I have to sign non-disclosure agreements, and I'm not sure which ones have expired yet. So, I Best I mums the word, yeah, I guess, around check here. Check it out on IMDb and a lot of the, um, the gaming sites and and there's going to be a lot of stuff coming in the very near future. So Very cool. And also, I'm going to ask you like some personal questions about like being a voiceover actor. Um, like, What's your preparation like? like what's your day-to-day? -day? Like, how do you take care of your voice? Like, do you have a routine? Yeah, well, there really is no prep time for most of the stuff I do. I'm, I'm lucky if I get a script the night before, and that's only in original animation. In uh, anime, we get a script maybe a minute to five minutes before we record, and we just you know, do it. And, and rely on the director for all the backstory. Um, as far as taking care of the voice, I just try not to blow it out. We scream a lot, especially in the game world. 
And so I try to rest in between when I can. And I've got Chinese herbal throat drops that I swallow throughout the day and lots of tea and lots of water. Just got to stay really hydrated and uh, try to eat kind of (laughs) healthy when I have time. Which is the crappy part, trying to eat healthy. Even if you're like not a voiceover actor, it's still the crappy part. Yeah, I eat a lot of lunches on my lap, so. Uh, Understandable. Um, So when you got into voiceover initially, um, did you choose anime or did anime choose you? Anime seduced me big time. Yeah, I was I had no intention of going into it. I didn't even really know what it was other than what I had seen. And at that time, there wasn't much to see, especially in English dubs. So um, a buddy of mine just happened to be casting a show and we messed around with voices in a place that we were working. And he asked me to come in and see if I could rip a monster's arm off vocally. And it worked out. I ended up doing 26 episodes of that show and got hired for another one. And 17 years later, I've got a career. So oh, that's awesome. I was lucky, but it was a lot of work to get to this point, And I, I couldn't do this full time until about eight years ago. So um, as far as like uh, your favorites in the anime world, like what are some things where you're just like, wow, that's so awesome. Like that's my favorite anime. Or maybe it's something that you've done where you could be like, you know what, I was really proud of that. Well, there were a lot of them, and there's so much good stuff out there. One of the shows that I uh, did some writing for a long time ago was Trigun, and uh, loved that show. There were some really funny, fun elements to that one. Of course, Cowboy Bebop, because it just became such an iconic thing and had all the right elements at the right time with the right cast and the great writing and great music, and it was just one of those magical concoctions that, um, you know, just had a lasting effect on the whole community. Um, that's probably the benchmark for me, really, is Bebop, and everything else is measured by that on one level or another. Sorry, I've got no time to play around with you guys. So, but now to get to do something like Gurren Lagann um, is a completely different side. I get to play a very effeminate character and something that I really haven't gotten to explore in my career. And do you have a special voice that you do? Like, is there a certain way you affect your voice for that character? Well, my favorite line of Liron's is, when you screw it in, make sure to give it a hard manly twist. <laughs> and that's not that, you know, I'm, us- I'm usually known for these big, pounding, gnarly voices. And, and so for me to be able to go into that place is really fun. Oh, that's very different. I like the big, gnarly man voice that you just did, but that's just me personally. I listen to metal, so I'm biased. So, um... Anything else that we can expect from you on the horizon? Is there a website where people can go to to check in and uh, right see how you're doing? Yeah, right now I don't have a website up yet, but just keep checking on IMDb. and there's IMDb.com. Um, yeah, or, or just Google my name, and a lot of stuff comes up, a lot of stuff that I don't even know about. There's a lot of projects that I work on that I don't even know the titles to until they, they're released. So you guys probably know more than I do out there. So check it out and tell me what's going on, will you? <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. You're it's the bomb. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, man, definitely. All right, y'all, signing off. Peace.